I haven't even looked at this rundown that you made. That wait, is it just pasted at the bottom? Can I see? Oh my gosh! What do you mean? Yeah, you can see. You should be reading it. Yeah, it just like repasted it at the bottom. I don't know why. But like there were also sentences like attached to each other in there. It was really just as long as you start at the top, it'll be fine. Can I do the intro? Whatever you want. I gotta remember to talk into a microphone. It's been too long. Yeah. I do have a nice bassy voice because we've been recovering. Radio voice. Welcome back to Oversharing with the Overbees. We have a podcast where we talk. Who are we? Who are we? We're the Overbees. <laughs> I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And we try to keep things really conversational. We're talking about what's going on in our lives, what's going on in the world, and really anything else that comes to mind. And who are we? What the do we Overbees. do? The <laughs> <laughs> Do what? So what do we do? We create content on the internet. Yes, we do. And if you're here watching this, I think there's like a 99% chance that you stumbled upon this via our TikTok (laughs) or you already follow me somewhere on the internet. I mean, that's fair. If you found us another way, please tell us how. Yeah, that would be interesting. We want to know. Like if there's some things we should be doing, let us know. We are an open book. We like to talk with y'all. What? Nothing. No. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I feel like I did a fine job, but you did. Who do you think we are? What? You, I was just saying, if if someone didn't know, we had to tell them. Yeah. How else would they know? The other videos on our YouTube. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Another episode of this podcast. Well, if they found it, you know, if they're just they just wanted to start it, at episode eight. Yeah. I get that. I do that. I skip around. But also when I skip around, I don't expect people to give an introduction every single time. Should I? I don't know. I mean, I think you just kind of, if it's the most recent episode, some people just play the newest one. I've always talked about with Caroline that we need like a, this is oversharing with the overbees where Matt and Joe, content creators from Arkansas, and it like (laughs) does like a whole thing. Are you getting the guy from like (laughs) football broadcasting to do it? Like, is that the plan? How cool would that be? (laughs) <laughs> that would be great it's like are you ready for some football <laughs> you're, you're blending so many things right now <laughs> <laughs> it's like that music in the background that kind of vibe though yeah yeah, like yeah. it's like waiting all day for oversharing with the other bees yeah and then it's like oversharing <laughs> No, I take it all back. I want the guy from the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday commercial. Yeah, we're kind of blunt. You kind of want like a, almost a, uh, like a movie trailer voice. No, I, I want it to be like Wednesday, 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 oversharing's coming to YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) And where are we putting this on the radio? No. I was like, where are we putting this? this ad it it's not an ad it just is our intro (laughs) we can work on the words it's an intro for our own podcast okay yeah got it yeah and then it's like if we can't use it we'll sell you the whole seat but you'll only need the edge but it's sell you the whole seat and you'll need the whole seat because it's an hour long (laughs) and they may may or may not talk about anything you're interested in yeah I, guys, whoever's listening, let us know what you think. Do we need intro music? Probably not intro music we record if they're, if we've learned oh, anything. Oh, no. Yeah. It can't be an original that we write. No. No, That would no, be no. so bad. All right. Update the people on your week. Our week? It's really been, it's a little over a week since we last recorded. Yeah. They don't know that, but I mean, it's now they true. Do. Yeah. That's transparency. That's the transparency you get here at Oversharing. Yeah. We'll just we'll just tell you stuff. Match is constantly oversharing. Yeah, we're oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> but unch- that's why we, you know what? Truth in advertising. I think that's something we believe in here. Something we've always tried to deliver. So uh, we traveled, visited my uh, my grandfather for his 80th birthday. Mm-hmm. A little surprise because mm-hmm. he didn't know the whole family was flying down to celebrate him. Yep. Um, 
Then we got back and... Uh, oh, no details on the trip. It was just <laughs> glazed. All right, got it. No, 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 it was good. So, I mean, a lot of family time. I got with my, uh, my aunt and uncle and my other aunt and uncle and my parents and my grandparents, mm-hmm. obviously, because, you know, birthday. I made sourdough. You're not going to mention I made sourdough? Oh, yeah. Honestly, I forgot all the details of the trip. <laughs> I'm offended. You should be. You did a lot. You you were doing like like cooking and mainly just cooking, but that's a huge deal. For me it is. Yeah. Not that it's rarely seen. I made my first ever loaf of sourdough mm-hmm. and it went relatively well. I mean, I think it went really well. It was I really want to make a starter and have it here and do some of that here. Yeah. Cuz I think I would really eat it. <laughs> I think I would eat a lot of sourdough. <laughs> okay. Don't you think I would? No, I mean, I, I have no doubt that you would I eat would a lot of sourdough. I would probably get a little fluffy. Yeah, I mean... But I'd, I'd be happy and fluffy. That, you know, there's some value in that for sure. I, I think there's a lot of value in that. I don't really care what I look like. <laughs> I really care how the sourdough tastes. Yeah. What I do like is you're like two years behind the sourdough trend. Yeah. Like it was it was very but popular, you know, also pandemic times. Not really because I almost exclusively eat sourdough bread since I was a child. Mhm. So, I'm just behind on the DIY at home. <laughs> DIY bread. <laughs> That's what they call it. Cooking. Yeah. Baking. I'm a bread craftsman. I I have a home bread shop. <laughs> Where I do a lot of my bread building. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to get it. Yeah. (laughs) Aren't we both? Don't you want like just loads of warm sourdough around? As a man that doesn't eat bread? Yeah, that sounds delightful. Yeah, that's my dream. Just to be surrounded by (laughs) bread. Just to constantly smell like warm sourdough. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I like the idea of just temptation everywhere. We have a bread oven. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we do have a bread oven. We have a very... Dude, did you ever in your life think you'd own a bread oven? No, I honestly, I just thought it was an oven that had two parts. Didn't really realize it was like label specific for bread. It is, isn't it? I, I think you're right. Yeah, it's the right size. So Matt and I, for those of you listening, whenever we renovated the kitchen at the house that we live, we wanted a double oven just sheerly for the size of the kitchen i feel like yeah well the idea is like we host holidays and stuff and so um uh, people people get double ovens a lot of people don't really use them very often but you get them so that with the idea of like i'm gonna have thanksgiving and we need to have pies in the oven and we need to be making well potato casserole or whatever you're doing and so like you want the ability to have multiple oven spaces and the thing is we moved into the house The last week in May. Mm -hmm. And so it's been June, July, August. It's been four months. And we have hosted four different events with 50 plus people at our house since then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So. Even then, though. I'm just defending my choice. Oh, no, no, no. We have been hosting a lot. It's a great place to host people. Counterpoint, we've rarely used the oven. Well, it wasn't hooked up for the first two events. <laughs> yep, and they went off flawlessly. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. I mean, there's a little Thanksgiving, bit of Thanksgiving. Uh, I think we're gonna need it. Exactly. So there's a couple holidays a year that you you do a lot of cooking. That's really what people put in double ovens for. And in our case, we didn't want to do a double oven, like because a double oven, a true double oven, is like on top two of each other, full and ovens full on top ovens. of each other. Yeah, um, usually installed in the wall. Uh, this is a 48 inch range. So it's like a three foot oven then like a one foot bread oven on the side. It's like the least fancy version of a double oven kind of. Well, it isn't. It isn't. You know, there's. Uh, Tell me more. Y- you can go fancier or less well, fancy on both. I just feel like an oven like. Although to be honest, we got a pretty affordable 48 inch range. So. Well, I feel like a like slide in insert. Mm hmm is like the less fancy of ovens and ranges. I don't know. I feel like we're definitely not appliance experts, but we're getting Is deep. that not true? I'd like to state that I'm not basing this on any fact. I'm basing this off of like just gut what I thought. 
Yeah. You know, like when you're a kid and that if a friend's house had like a basketball hoop that you were like, oh, their parents like are rich, rich. Never thought that. But yeah, maybe oh, I, okay. I can see. You know what? I, I, I get your point. OK. I don't know about a basketball. You're, you're talking about an in-ground like installed basketball hoop. Yeah. OK. I was like. Like one in the driveway that was actually not like. like In concrete. Not like you know a what? rolling I'm, away I'm one. back with you because it. Yeah. If I was like imagining like attached to the house or like freestanding. No, no, no. With sandbags on it? No, like one that went into the ground. Like some people had them that went yeah. into their driveways. That was definitely, you know what? I'm I'm back in. I made fun of you. As usual, I make fun of you and then I come back around. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, that was like, wow, fancy. Yeah, I was like, whoa. That's how I felt about ovens that didn't have stoves on top of them. That didn't? Yeah. Okay, so like a true built-in oven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can see it. I was like, whoa, this is... And so my whole life, I've never done any research into that. I've just <laughs> continued on with that idea. Separate cooktop is like... Yeah. I mean, to be honest, separate cooktop is usually more expensive, but... Yeah. But is that because it's better or is that just because they can No can't idea. Be? No. Mm-hmm. No, right. we're back out of my expertise. All right. Well, doesn't matter. Not important. Point is, we have a bread oven and I'm thinking sourdough after our trip to phoenix i mean you learned how you've done it once nothing's stopping you now yeah and i'd like it to be clear that i was guided by somebody who is absolutely phenomenal and baking is like a second fluent language for her Mm -hmm. yeah i mean she's like a semi-professional baker yeah so i don't know how i do by myself but i still think i'll try sure a good thing to have fun with i mean why not yeah i have to learn how to uh get more something in it i don't remember what like you're trying to i I, like the way that i rolled it wasn't good enough oh i need to create more tension ah tension that was my my biggest downfall but i didn't really understand what she meant it's some loose bread what you had some loose bread yeah (coughs) wow a moment yeah and that cough brings us to post trip yeah (laughs) since getting home it's been more downhill Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we came home we tested for covid because we were going to see my family we are vid negative yeah i've tested twice now it's not covid whatever we ended up with and i also tested twice tested g twice i think we're mostly on the other side of whatever we are recovering but if you're wondering wow matt sounds like he just has this beautiful sultry voice maybe he should be doing movie trailers it's just because i'm sick i don't think anybody's thought that i I wouldn't get ahead of yourself okay yeah and having a sick baby there's nothing worse no having a sick baby really sucks having a sick baby while you're sick also sucks being sick as a parent is a different kind of olympic sport yeah Mm -hmm. well you're just like I feel terrible, but I have a job to do. And I have someone who also feels terrible, but that I am almost 100% responsible for. Like, yeah. Is it almost? Is it really like 100%? It's 100%. But I wasn't going to correct you because then I thought to myself, maybe he means like split between me and him. Oh, no, no. no, Yeah. Yeah. We are 100% responsible for this child. Together, we are 100% responsible. But like, maybe if you're more sick than me, we can go 90 10, you know? It's true, but like, I guess, yeah, it's not like she can go find something to eat for herself. No. Like, that's, it's 100% on us. She's, uh, I mean, she poops her pants like multiple times a day, so. That's what babies do. Yeah. Just the reality of it. But Mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're like, I feel bad. This kid also feels bad. And they usually are like, hey, I feel bad, but I don't really know what's going on or how to properly express myself. So I'm just going to be, you know, sad or mad or both. For a period of time, our kid was two hand slap, left, right. That's what I was going to point out. was going left hand slap, right hand slap hug to me. So I was like, why, what, what does this mean? Why are you doing this? She never has slapped me. Well, she has slapped me a thousand times. That's, That's the weird thing is she only does that to you. Well, she respects her mom, I guess. I don't know if that's it. And her dad is just a slapping bag. I think maybe she thinks it's a fun game. (laughs) 
Well, she does it when she's mad. So I don't know. I don't know what your your idea is there, but I disagree. I think she's doing it because she's pretty pissed. Yeah, we've been working through getting through big feelings. Yes. We're well, getting yeah. better. She's also just at that age right. where like they're starting to get it more and then also be like, what is happening? Yeah. So that's fair. So the sickness has been an interesting deal in our house. Yep. We're on the upswing, but uh, yikes. Yikes there for a little while. Yeah. But you did get a lot done. Yeah. Around yeah. the house. Yeah. We, I mean, we were just, we were just kind of hunkered down. So it was like, uh, guess I'll uh, install some speakers outside, finally get that job completed because Joe's making fun of me on TikTok. Um, I did. I posted a TikTok publicly <laughs> shaming him for not finishing the projects he starts. Yes. And uh, was it that night or the day after that I finished it? It was the day after. Okay. Yeah. I had to get some parts. I was I was missing some parts. Yeah. I, I fished a bunch of wire through some attic space with a... Some badass magnets I ordered on the internet and weed whacker string because uh, pull string was too snaggy. And now our backyard has phenomenal sound. It really does. They sound great. So, And more house updates and big moves. Our uh, chair for our bedroom mm. was delivered. Yeah. And it is already doing its thing as a laundry chair. Well, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say laundry. It's all it, of the pillows from the bed. Yeah, I have all the pillows from the bed stuff. We've done a good right job now. of not putting too many clothes on it. Yeah. Well, okay. Slight counterpoint. Uh, I did put clothes on it. Uh, I put the suit for the wedding we just went to uh, <laughs> on it. And then so I left it there. Saturday. When we yeah. Matt and I hop in the car. We're going to a wedding multiple hours away uh, in our hometown. Mm-hmm. And we spent the whole morning getting G ready because Matt's parents are going to babysit G for the evening. We wanted to make sure they had everything they needed. We were taking clothes to change into to go to the wedding because we were going to get to our hometown, go to lunch with Matt's parents, and then head to the wedding. And I'm honestly really glad that this went the way it did because it could have been worse. It could have been when you went to go find your suit to change. Uh, yeah, true. Like, I, I thought about that. That would have been really bad Mm -hmm. but we pull into matt's parents driveway i open up the trunk to grab g's overnight bag and matt goes um my suit's not back here Uh uh-huh and i i again i repeat i think it was really good you noticed then i noticed immediately because it could have been like 2 30 and there would have been no time like i don't know what you would have done i would have dropped you off at that wedding Okay. Well, that I only had shorts with me. Again, to discuss, you know what? They are the exact shorts I'm wearing right now. So go to youtube.com and you can see. You better these- stand up and give them a twirl. Okay, fine. Because I don't feel like they can Ugh. see them. Green leopard shorts. That's what I have. Green leopard shorts. And I, I did have my shirt. A very wrinkled white button down shirt. Well, and, and, a, and a blazer that that shirt was also wrinkled in that I just thrown it in there with. Good thing. Well, yeah, kind of a good thing. Actually, it was a really good thing. I, I think it was a great thing. It really brought the outfit together. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, if that would have happened, I would have shown up and I'd had shorts and a, a button down and a blazer. It would have been funny. <laughs> yeah. And what would I have had for shoes? I just like tennis shoes. Yeah. Oh, I'd have been sick. Yeah. So then I went to lunch with Matt's mom and we went shopping and Matt went to town to find an outfit yeah. and it worked out great. He ended up finding a phenomenal pair of pants that he can squat in. Uh, they are the stretchiest pants in the business. Yeah. Tommy Hilfiger, TH Flex. I just found him at Macy's. Turns out they were on super sale. Didn't even know that when I got them. I was just like, hey, here's some light blue pants. And they really stretch. No way I'm going to tear these bad boys. Well, and you were showing off your pants all night long. Oh, 
They were a crowd pleaser. Yeah. You were doing squats at the end of the night. You could the drop groom, it low. The groom had both his hands in your pants looking for the okay. tag okay. in which labeled the pants because he wanted some of those pants. Yeah. Yeah. They were so stretchy. You could stretch the waistband like four inches yeah. out. Everybody was very impressed. Yeah. They were awesome. But uh, I could run track in those pants. What I was going to say is before we left for the wedding... You panicked for a second that you forgot your shoes. Yeah. And you just grabbed your tennis shoes and was like, guess I have to wear these. Even though your dad had like a perfectly fine (laughs) pair of dress shoes, you were like, no, I'll just wear my Adidas. Yeah. Yeah. That was out of pure frustration, but it did make me giggle to imagine you in that full, uh, like formal outfit with Adidas. With some white sneakers on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we talked about G having big feelings. I was having a lot of big feelings that day as well because I had left my suit and, uh. It made me very not happy. It worked so, out. I thought you handled it beautifully. Yeah, no. I, you know what? I got I got some new pants. I actually went and found a, a new shirt because I was like, that other shirt looks pretty gross. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a new shirt also. And then I had the blue blazer that I threw in there. So I, uh, I had a whole cohesive look. I looked not out of place. And the wedding was amazing. Yeah, ton of fun. We stayed so much later than I thought we would. Yeah, we did. So... We partied hard. Well, that's that's how we do it. We, we were like babyless. It down. We were babyless, and we really took advantage of that. Time flies when your kids at grandma's house. Yeah, exactly. We got back to grandma's house, and grandma couldn't get baby to sleep in the crib. So no, which isn't even surprising. It was just like, no, nah, baby's sleeping in bed with us because she was anti-crib, especially without like knowing where her parents had been for the last six hours yeah but other than that g did really well yeah. she hasn't done many nights away from us so no nah. it's always good to hear that she's done well but hey grandma had a lot of fun so i think she would do and it again. grandpa apparently she was a big papa yeah, she fan. was big into papa yeah that's what i heard all right do you want to do word of the week first you know what yeah let's let's go for it let's go for it word of the week zeitgeist you familiar? No. Okay. Zeitgeist. Zeit. Oh, Zeit. Z- Zeitgeist. Z e i t g e i s t. Zeitgeist. German. See, you know what makes me really mad? What? They teach you I before E except after C, but that's bullshit. I before E unless after C unless it's German. Yeah, but like most of our words in English are not English, I feel like. <laughs> Fair. Fair, but in this case, I before E, unless after C or in Zeitgeist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does zeitgeist, zeitgeist mean? Zeitgeist. Spirit of the times. Zeitgeist. It's like... Um, wait, 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 wait. Let me try to use it. Okay. Wait, is it a ver- <laughs> is it a verb or is it an adjective? It's definitely a noun. What? Yeah. Okay. It's the spirit of the times. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, your pants were the zeitgeist of the wedding. <laughs> I, I I don't know that it really works. <laughs> like I don't think my pants were indicative of the time we were living in. I, but, I it felt like it was for us, you and me, not not for the wedding itself, for everyone there. Yeah, it's kind of more of a universal thing. Oh, like, okay, okay. Like TikTok okay, short form the, video is very is much the in the cultural zeitgeist. The no, just zeitgeist in the zeitgeist. Oh, like the zeitgeist as the spirit of the times. Things are usually a part of or not a part of. Oh, yeah. So yeah. something isn't the zeitgeist usually. You not not really. Something's just part of the zeitgeist. In the zeitgeist, yes. Okay. So like low rise so, jeans in the zeitgeist, zeitgeist of the nineties. I was gonna well, say like Y two K is in the zeitgeist right now. It, oddly enough, yes. Okay, it's I know coming that that, back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got okay, it. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. So the thing that I noted this week to talk about is this happened, I think this started a few weeks ago, so we're a little late on the take of the news, but I think that that's good because Mm -hmm. we can maybe discuss 
everything that's taken place and happened. A little more context. But I want to talk about the makeup artist, Michaela, who is on TikTok. She has almost 14 million followers Mm -hmm. and has created this huge platform. She's very young. I think she's like 22 or 23. I I didn't look that up. But I, I know that she's in her early 20s. She just bought her first home. She took people on her journey. She used to work at Ulta and made content on the side and then eventually left her job at Ulta to per, uh, pursue content creation full time. And people have been able to kind of watch her go from a very relatable, normal nine to five employee to a content creator and influencer. Mm-hmm. And I think people have really enjoyed watching her journey just because she's been very relatable in my opinion. But a couple years ago, she posted a video and uh, I actually remember when the video went out and people talked about it then, but a couple weeks ago they brought up the video again. Somebody like took a snippet of it and I actually wrote down what the snippet is. Okay. And it is her saying, I literally just finished work and it's 519. Try being an influencer for a day. Try it. I don't even know what that like snippet really means. Right. A hundred percent. Right. Like you don't have enough context to know what she's referring to. No. At least in my opinion. And I definitely haven't seen the original video. So. So uh, it caused a huge influx of hate and calls to cancel her for being completely out of touch. Okay. Her comment sections were full of people telling her that. She's the problem with the world and that she should just go kill herself and that nurses and teachers and people like that work way harder than her and her job is easy and that she needs to like shut up and never post again. And yes. Mm, Wow. Aggressive. Yes. You know what? I'd like to make a stance here of this podcast. We don't condone telling anyone to kill themselves. Ever. Yeah, don't don't go writing that. I don't anywhere. care what they do. Don't ever no. comment that. Although no. I assume that if you're listening to this, you're probably not somebody that's commenting that on. If you are, it's like not cool. Yeah. If you made it this far to the <laughs> podcast, I would be surprised. Yeah. Without commenting on our video. <laughs> yeah. Without telling us to go kill ourselves. Yeah. But Anyway, I just wanted to talk about it. She has now, she was dead silent on social media for, I think, like almost a week. Wow. And the the really heartbreaking part about it is she's been really outspoken in the last few months about her struggle with depression and anxiety mm-hmm. and um, just having a really, really, really tough time with her mental health. And to then see people turn on her like that was really sad because I feel like we're in this time where people really preach that we need to be prioritizing mental health. Mm -hmm. But then we only prioritize it when we think people are worthy of prioritizing their mental health. Exactly. You need to prioritize your mental health unless I think you don't have anything to be mentally unwell. Unless I don't think you're worth. Yeah. Like if you have other things going on that are good, like your mental health should be rock solid. Right. So uh, what is bad in your life? And yeah. Well, I thought it was really interesting. So to give you a little context about the video that that clip is from, Mm -hmm. she did take it down two years ago because at the root of it, what she was saying did not come across maybe the way that she intended it. She didn't translate. Yeah. And like, you know, maybe it was one of those things that wasn't perfectly worded or... I, you know, like, yeah. I just, it just, it just didn't hit. Yeah. But what she was doing was she was telling people about, she had had a bad day mm-hmm. and she was talking through what her day included. And I think she may have been responding to a comment. I don't really remember. Bad day. Was she still working at Alta? No, she was. She okay. Had just she'd started, just gone full time. She'd just okay. gone full time, which taking content creation full time I think the thing that so many people got heated over this is, and I think the reason people get heated at influencers in general when it comes to this is because when an influencer tries to justify that their job is hard, 
people like can't. Yeah. They cannot because they look at the amount of money that a lot of content creators make and they're like, well, what if you were a teacher? You couldn't do a teacher's job for a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and they make, you know, a tenth of that or whatever it is. And the hours are your own. So yeah, I, I, there's, you know, it's, the, it's the hours, it's all the stuff that goes into it. There's a lot of freedom that goes into the job, but right. it also means that there's very little separation between the job and your life, which is something right. that not everybody thinks about. Well, and I, I, I get where people are coming from. Yeah. With that, because sure. it does come with a ton of privileges that other jobs don't. Absolutely. It also comes with a lot of things, a lot of opinions and a lot of feedback. And I know that the outside world often thinks that that is deserved. They're like, you're putting it out there, mm-hmm. so you better be able to take it. And I think that that's a really interesting take. I have yeah. a lot of thoughts on that. I don't necessarily agree with it. But to kind of take it back to that original video, she had had a bad day. And so she was talking through in response, I believe, to a comment, but I'm not positive. Like, I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. Mm -hmm. I've been filming since 5 a.m. I pushed out four videos. I had meetings with brands. You know, it's 519 p.m. And I'm just now finishing up the things I needed to get done for work today. Yeah. So what she's describing in that video is a 12-hour work day and she's just now getting done and that's just task related that's not talking about anything to do with the mental load that comes with putting everything out there online and that may not be responding to comments or doing anything else like there's right that that is part of it with the job not being separated from your life you you can work as little as you want kind of as long as you're getting enough out there to sustain whatever it is you're going after or you can work as much as you want. And like there is to a degree an incentive for working more and more and more and more. So a lot of really driven content creators, you've been this way in the past for sure, where you're like, no, I need to be doing all of this stuff in order to grow a community and in order to support the people that follow like to, to do everything that I feel I need to be doing. Like I need to be working a lot more than people really think about. And like responding to comments may not feel like work and reading DMs and going through all that stuff isn't in the traditional sense of what people think of as work, but it absolutely is a task that you have to go through and it's it becomes part of your job. Well, and I, again, at the root of it, I think that maybe how she worded things mm-hmm. or the tone that she had wasn't ideal, but that's here nor there because I think whenever you consider nuance and the fact that people have bad days and no matter what your job is... yeah. I don't care how good it is. There are days that are like, I was a wedding photographer and for the most part, it was awesome. I got to go to people's weddings. I got to celebrate with them. Mm -hmm. It like, there were a lot of really positive parts to being a wedding photographer that I loved. And there were some parts that were really, really hard about it. I think that's any job. Now, granted, some jobs have more bad sides than other others, but this attitude that we have where we all have to compare where we are, Mm -hmm. it's really hard. And I think that it's really tough the way that we're expecting people to lay out every single good thing they have before they're allowed to acknowledge hard things that they're going through. Yeah. And it's, it is a little frustrating because if you asked that person, like if they were grateful for the good things they have, I'm sure for the most part, those people would say yes. But sometimes people are just venting, you know, like this thing sucks mm-hmm. the rest of my life. Great. Today, this sucked. Yeah. And like, uh, it's a little unfortunate that we can't have more of that gray area to just go, you know what? That probably does suck. Like your life in general. Good. But. Well, and in the comment section, it was really interesting because. Somebody said, and I, 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 this really resonated with me. It was like people in the comments are boiling down influencing to, well, they just take videos of themselves, post on the internet and make <laughs> money. And uh, I mean, fair, <laughs> totally fair. But the person said, you could also boil down any job that way. Like yeah. you, all you do is sit at a cubicle and respond to emails or pharmacist is like, all you do is give people pills. Right. 
Like, they just tell you what pills they want and then you give it to I them. I don't know if you can simplify it that <laughs> that one that much. That wasn't one I was going to go for. I don't know. I just was winging it. But You could. It's not right. But Yeah, no. I, and that's that's kind of <laughs> the point is like this really heavy oversimplification of other people's life experiences is so detrimental not only to that person but also to yourself. Mm-hmm. Because when you belittle and make smaller the things that other people are going through, it it warps your perspective. Yeah. I feel like. And it can also make you feel like your life's almost harder mm-hmm. because you're making everybody else's life around you seem so easy. Yeah. I know that I, I'm really guilty of that. Yeah. it's re- I mean, that you're not wrong. Well, something that I really struggle with and I have to really talk through in therapy is my mom's health and like not having my mom there in the way that I think of a mom traditionally being there Yeah, is sometimes really hard for me. And I think about it and I'm like, man, I wish my mom could help me with this or that. And I finally had a conversation with a couple of my close friends about that. And I realized as I was talking to them, their moms also aren't able to do those things, but for different reasons. Or yeah. some of them don't have the relationship with their mom. Some of them don't have, like, it's not for health reasons. It's not for a relationship or time. Or, yeah. But know, I was distance. realizing that I was making myself feel bad, assuming that other women had something that I didn't, when really it's, it's not that way. And it's not really my business what other no. women do or don't have. And it doesn't change your situation one way or the other. And that comparison was making me feel bad because (laughs) I was oversimplifying everyone else's life and overcomplicating mine. Yeah. So. Well, and everybody's, yeah. Again, we've talked about this before, but everybody's problems are their biggest problems. And so it's, uh, sometimes it's hard to look past your own problems and really put yourself in someone else's situation. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It really is. And I, 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 I think that there's a lot of value having content creators get on and be really transparent about the mm-hmm. privileges that they have and that the privileges that their job brings them. Cause I think people need that context. Yeah. But I also think that maybe canceling somebody for, um, a little bit loose comment like that was, a bit aggressive or kind of exaggerated comments on a bad day. Right. Yeah. Well, and again, I don't think anybody is going to argue like, you know, content creation is physically more demanding than digging ditches or, you know, or mentally more demanding than some, but it's just like, that a nurse there are demands that COVID? go into, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, there are demands to every job, no right. matter how good or bad it looks. Right. A hundred percent. And she ended up making a video where she came on and kind of talked about everything. And she said that she said, as I was saying these things, was I intending for you to compare them to that of a nurse or that of a doctor surgeon, you know, a teacher? She's like, no, I I don't think that things are innately harder for me than they are for them. No. She's like what I intended. And so like, obviously like miscommunicated and just failed at. And she, she came on and was like, look, I was wrong for those yeah, statements. She's like, I suck at this. Yeah. Uh, but she said that I, I wasn't looking to do a side by side comparison of my job to other people's. No. I was looking for people to put their themselves in my shoes and like actually experience it before mm-hmm. passing judgment. And she was like, well, that probably wasn't fair either. And it looks like it didn't work. No, it but- didn't work. They don't always do. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and move forward to Greg's Reads of the Week. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Just to clarify, Greg's your dad. Oh, yeah. My (laughs) father-in-law. He reads a lot of business news. We don't. So he likes to keep us read. And we like to rate on a scale of one to 10 how much anxiety these articles gave us and whether we read them or not. Uh, Spoiler alert. I didn't read any of them. I read some of these. Good job. All right. First one is police warn parents about school photo trend of oversharing on social media. Dot, dot, dot. Fox News. <laughs> uh, I'll give it a one. Uh, I'm also, I'm going to give it a zero. It did not cause me any anxiety. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even finish their sentence. 
I did read it. Okay. What's the I trend? I think that it makes really good obvious points. Okay. Uh, not obvious. I shouldn't say that. Is I this think... like the same stuff that we've been getting told since like we were in high school? Yes. And like the cell phone camera had like 32 pixels total. Yes. And it's like, you know how uh, people have their kids, they make them like those signs that say right now, I want to be a doctor and mm-hmm, I love, mm-hmm. I'm five nine and I have blonde hair or I don't. <laughs> what? What are these signs? You know what I'm talking about where they like hold, it's like, it's like first day of school. Oh, like the little like. And it's like, yeah. I want to be a firefighter. My hair is blonde. Like a little My... mini placard thing. Yeah. Got it. Yep. And anyway, the the whole article was about like. You need to blur out your information. Like, don't put their teacher's name. Don't gotcha. put what school they go to. Don't, you know. So. Sure. I thought gotcha. it was a good article. I'm Timmy. I'm going to Miss Grant's class. Uh, the last four of my social is right. 1664. Right. I live at this address. Yeah. Like, don't put <laughs> well, that Well, but I think a lot there. of parents just don't think about that stuff. No. no. That's fair. Like, why would you? I wish you didn't have to. It'd be great if you didn't. All right. The next one was Warren Buffett says your overall happiness in life really comes down to four simple words. Ink. Do, okay. Good cliffhanger. That's I don't know the, about I don't know about anxiety, so I'm back down to like a one. But also, like, a, this is also a zero for yeah. me. Uh, so zeros on the scale. Okay, just to if be it's clear. not, then a one. Okay. I don't know. We should get our scale straight. Okay, sorry. One. Yeah, it does not give me anxiety. I am curious though, so well, I well teased. I didn't read it, but I intended to. <laughs> okay, I'd plan. We may to. never know what the four simple words are. Well, I opened the message while I was filming. Oh, and I was like, oh, I want to go back and read that, and then I haven't thought about it again until now. This is the now. first time you've looked at it again. Yeah. Got it. Uh, it it doesn't have any buzzwords that give me anxiety. Like Warren Buffett, he doesn't stress me out. Nope. Happiness doesn't stress me out simple simple like i like simple. simple it's almost soothing yeah I, that's that's kind of how i'm feeling all right now this one millionaire shares four unpopular money rules that made him rich <laughs> don't buy anything you can lease okay didn't read it five out of ten that oh okay i was gonna say back down to one for me oh really no i yeah. don't I'm just not that worried about that guy. I'm not worried about that guy. I just like, I, well, one, I'd like to point out that the graphic for this is a house with a big for sale sign okay. and anything including real estate right now, <laughs> my anxiety is immediately too like, sensitive about it. We're too, hmm. we're too invested in our real estate right now. Our real, what? Our what? house. Oh, I was yeah, about to say, tell me more about our real estate. I like to talk about our one house that we own as our real estate portfolio. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I just described the whole thing. That's why you kind of got me there. I was like, wait a second, what? And that's by CNBC. I didn't say that, but okay. okay. And last one, don't miss out what you need to know about federal tax credits if you're thinking of buying an electric dot, 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 KCCI. Got to assume that's electric vehicle. I would imagine. Or, I don't know. This one's also like a five out of 10 for me because it says tax and federal. Oh, tax. Yeah. (laughs) It does remind, you know what? I was going to say like a three, but I'm going to step it up to like a four now that you've talked about taxes. Yeah. 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 I am one of those people that always thinks I'm paying my taxes wrong. We try to pay as, you know, we we pay them very fully, but. Probably almost definitely pay way more than I should. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those people. I'm like, no, I don't need to write it off. You're like, I, eh, gray area? I think if we it's should the just gray area, it. I'm just going to pay it. Yeah. And we're not saying this just because we know the IRS is listening. We're saying it because it's just a fact. No, it's just who I You're am. You're just so concerned about like ever possibly like someone looking into anything. I, You're like, I'm paying taxes on everything. I think if I got audited, they'd be like, what they would owe doing? me money. Yeah. They'd be like, mm, just kidding. We didn't audit you. I really do think they would owe me money. There's a good chance. And that's chance. okay with me. Yeah. If they're like, I'm like, that's okay. It's all right. You can have it. It's a little silly, but. It makes me so anxious. Yeah. And that's where I've just decided like, yeah, it's probably just worth your peace of mind. Yeah. I'm happier that way. Yeah. I can see it. Okay. Are you ready to hop into voicemails? Let's do it. Voicemails, voicemails. If you guys want to leave us a voicemail, there is a link in the show notes. 
and uh, you can call, you can give us recommendations that you'd like to hear on the podcast this way. You can suggest a fun game. Tell us how to get more tension into sourdough. Yeah. Tell us how to get more tension in the sourdough. Yeah. Tighten up that bread. When you first said that, I thought you were saying attention. Like, oh. tell us how to get more attention in the... And I was like, oh, what's he going to say? <laughs> but then it made lots more sense. Yeah. Okay. I was calling back. Yeah. Are you ready? professional. Hi, Joe and Matt. Thank you for the podcast. I'm loving it. My question is, if you had any tips for moving in with a significant other for the first time. My boyfriend and I are gonna be moving in together and neither of us have lived with a significant other before, but we've been dating for a few years. Um, So I was just wondering if you had any tips. Thank you so much, bye. I'll start with, if you missed our episode a couple weeks ago, we did an episode about this actually a couple of weeks ago. This Um, is the slight downside to having a little bit of a recording delay. Is, uh, I, I bet we got that just before no, our episode. No, she sent this after that episode. Oh, okay. Know. So I think maybe she's just looking for more uh, condensed advice than got listening it. to our horror stories of our first year living together. Yeah, we probably ramble a little bit, huh? Yeah. Um, I would say my biggest tip is to go ahead and from the moment you move in, have a dedicated time. I think weekly is where you should start. And then as you feel sure. more comfortable, you could back off to monthly or quarterly or whatever mm-hmm. it is. But uh, like every Thursday night, it can be whatever you want it to be, to sit down for 30 minutes to an hour and talk through how you both feel things are going. And I think that 30 minutes to an hour needs to be an agreed upon safe zone for you guys to both bring up issues you're having without people getting defensive or angry. And that's the hard part, really. Like for you, you. <laughs> for sure, for you. No, I I just think it tends to be difficult for people to have to sit down and air grievances uh, and then not react negatively uh, for me. I It's not that I, I say people, people is me. It's not that I think I'm like the world's best yeah. or anything, but I think that I receive constructive criticism and actually enjoy constructive criticism and so I just don't necessarily see it that way. I hope one day to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I And I totally understand. I'm not judging you for that. I think no. that lots of people are like you. <laughs> there are probably a lot of people like me too. I think it just depends on your personality. Yeah. yeah. But I, I do. I think that's really important to be able to sit down each week because you have to get to the bottom of it and communicate about mm-hmm. like the silly things like the dishwasher not being loaded right or not feeling like your task load for things around the house is equal. Yeah. Not that it's ever going to be like perfectly 50 50 and there does need to be some like, sometimes you're just going to have to finish tasks for your partner. Yeah. Sometimes they're traveling. Sometimes they're not in a good mental state. Like you're going to have to balance Life, like you're, there's going to be ebbs and flows in people's capacity and people's uh, Here's ability. Here's something that has nothing to do with Matt and I's capacity that I <laughs> think we do. Matt does my dishes. True. I will do dishes as I cook, but like my plate and stuff, when I'm done, I will just set it by the sink. She also does not cook, so. Okay, but like when I do make did? things, like... If I use a bunch of different bowls to make a avocado dip or sure. like whatever, I wash mm-hmm. those as I go. Okay. Yeah. You know, I do. I'll allow it. Usually. Yep. Are, I can't tell if you're making fun of me or not. Do I not? It has not happened recently enough for me to really uh, keep it locked away, but I, I like the idea of it. I okay. can see it happening. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Regardless, my point is that Matt does my dishes for me a lot. Yep. Um, and he doesn't really complain about it for the most part something that i do for matt is throw away his trash (laughs) because matt just constantly trails trash everywhere it Uh, never makes well not never that's not fair but a lot of things don't make it to trash cans i'll get back to it i'm pretty (laughs) sure yeah what did what did you say to the gogurt wrappers that your mom found under your bed three years after you moved out well well well. i mean they got taken care of eventually uh-huh. I forgot about them. 
Uh-huh. I didn't get back to him. I moved out. I have no excuses. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. <sighs> no, but I... I'm trying to be a better adult. Yeah. And, and to me, that's not something that bothers me that much. I just pick it up and throw it away. And you wash the dish and put it in the dishwasher. Yep. Like there are just some things like that. There are going to be some executive function tasks that one of you is better at than the other. Period. I think. And I think as long as you have a balance, like obviously there's a task I don't do well and Matt really backs me up and there's a task he doesn't do well. And I, it doesn't work if yeah. one of you doesn't do the dishes and that same person doesn't throw away their trash and that same person doesn't do their laundry. Yeah. If, if nobody's bringing, you know, if somebody's bringing nothing to the table, that doesn't work. Right. And so, there's going to be things that neither one of you want to do. And that's what you're going to have to negotiate out. <laughs> yeah. Like, like trash. If you're both like, we will not do dishes. It's like, well, somebody probably should, or mm-hmm. you're going to have to use a lot of paper plates. It's not the most <laughs> eco-friendly thing I've ever heard. But you're going to have to like figure it out somehow. But I feel like both of us don't like taking out the recycling. No, I don't think we love it, but I do it, you know, the majority of the time. Yeah, I do it sometimes. Once in a while, for yeah. sure. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All that to say, set a time. Meet Figure regularly. out how it's going. Yeah. Just, just have something. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. There's going to be times you need space to yourself. You're used to having space to yourself. It's important for your uh, your growth and your mental health and all that. So all that to say, yeah, just meet regularly. Um, try and figure out a time where uh, you can hash all this stuff out and you'll get better at it as you go. And that's that's really all there is. If, if I have advice, it's uh, I'm a person who needs space to recoup. And if you're a person or you're with a person that needs their own space, uh, they're used to it. So just try and... Try and be aware of it and, and ask you, for it if you need it. If you're with somebody who thinks they never need their own space, they're wrong. Yeah. They just don't know Even it. if they're an extrovert and recharge with people, I think it's really healthy for people to have their own space. Yeah, I'd agree. So, you good? Yeah, that was a weird yawn that I had to stifle. Okay. Second. Voicemail. I couldn't think of the word voicemail. <laughs> Hey, Matt and Joe, you guys had mentioned that you are setting aside any earnings for G um, for any content that she's involved in and that you were also sticking to a pretty tight budget for your house renovation. Do you have any tips, tricks or resources for parents or those that are trying to stick to a budget? Thank you. I think that we operated within the budget that we set for ourselves, but it definitely wasn't a crazy tight budget. And I just want to be clear about that yeah. because I don't want anybody looking at our house renovation thinking that we did it on a on, shoestring budget. Yeah. No. Because I just don't think that's a fair expectation to no, set. No, not at all. But, and, oh. Yeah. And one thing I'd say about it is that we made, we actually kind of adjusted our budget over time too. Like we, we stretched it some because we were like, if we're going to be in this house forever, yes, it's going to cost us more money now to, to make a, a design choice or something like that. But it would be better to do it now when we're under construction than in five years, 10 years when it would make financially maybe more sense for us to because it would be even more expensive down the road and it would cost us time and uh, regardless we're talking anyway. too much because that's not really what the question is no um i just wanted to make sure that i noted got that. it but yes every time that g is involved with anything campaign wise which is very few and far in between mm-hmm. uh we set aside those earnings for her which has been really interesting yeah. um because just how all of it will um i'm learning a lot about taxes and mm-hmm. all that for having a child cuz she will have to pay income tax yeah on anyway so i've been learning a lot about that Past not a important point and all that stuff um yeah. i think mm, i don't want to give you any numbers cuz i don't want to quote you on anything but i know that there is a certain amount of money that you can pay your child a year or 
something that you don't have to pay income yeah, tax Yeah, there's basically on. just a certain point where you get all of the money you would pay in taxes back. But for all that kind of stuff, I recommend you talk to an accountant. Uh, what I have done is currently we have an account that those earnings go in. And then we also have a Acorns early account because I really like Acorns. Uh, do you even know I did that? I thought I told you. Yeah, you did. Okay. Um, so I have an Acorns early account and that just puts a designated amount weekly into her account. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I like that because I've just had a really good experience with that app. It's not sponsored. I've never worked with them. I've never even talked to anybody over there <laughs> in terms of, um, corporate or anything like that. It's just an app I like and use. Um, so I've been using that. And then we also are taking advantage of a education savings um account 529 yeah yeah and that's what we're doing right now we could probably get more strategic definitely could um but i have not quite gotten there yet but i, I think the best advice that i would give to a new parent who wants to make sure that they're setting up their child for financial success is finding out what you could do to get your child into a Roth IRA. I don't know what the rules and regulations are around that. I talk and that stuff changes too. So it, it does change. And I just talk to my accountant every year, which is a privilege to be able to talk to my accountant. But I also know that there is information online that goes more into detail on that. But, um, I try to put a little bit of money every year away for long-term savings and I, I think any opportunity you have to do that and any opportunity you have to save for education. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing about 529 is it's not just for uh, like a traditional college experience. They can use that for any higher education. So they could go get a two years associate degree. I think they can use it to go get certifications. I think they can even use it to like go to culinary school and things like that as well. Like they're not tied down to just doing the traditional four year bachelor's degree. Um, again, please read into that stuff because I don't know all the details and nuance of it, but that's where I would start. Uh, and the thing is don't get discouraged if you're not able, like, I, I know there are a lot of videos on TikTok, or at least I get a lot of videos on TikTok. and Matt, you can speak to this. Um, after I'm done, because I'd like to hear your perspective on this as well. I do most of our yeah, you're money the management, planner but relationship. Um, I see a lot of content on TikTok that's like, if you just save five hundred dollars a month every month after your kid's born until they're eighteen, and then stop, they'll be millionaires by the time they're you know whatever yeah. it is. I feel like those kinds of videos can be really disheartening because most people don't have $500 a month to put aside for their child. And if they have more than one child, like, you know, somebody with four children's watching that and being like, okay, so where am I coming up with this $25,000 a year yeah. on top of everything else I'm doing to invest for my kids? And it doesn't have to be like that. $10 a week or $20 a week or whatever it is that fits into your budget. I don't care if it's a dollar. Mm-hmm. A dollar a week, if that's where you're comfortable right now, and then upping it to $2, and then as you're comfortable, upping it to $5, those small increments add up, and a little bit puts people ahead of nothing. Yeah. So. Any advice for the question about budgeting? Any tools? I like acorns. Budgeting. I know. I don't. That's saving. <laughs> I, that's how I budget. Okay. Um, I've See? always, there you go. I've always been kind of a weird budgeter because I don't budget my, well, I, I guess in a way it is budgeting my spending because when my money's gone, I can't spend anymore. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sure. Um, but I budget my savings. So I really make myself hurt in terms of how much I'm saving. So when I was making my bottom line, whenever I was um, 
working a nine to five job was $1,500 a month. Like that was my costs, including rent, insurance, Mm -hmm. um, et cetera. And I think I made hmm, maybe like $2,200 a month. I think after taxes, sure. After taxes, I'm sure that I got a return, you know, probably wasn't doing any of that right at the time, (laughs) but let's say 2,500 for easy math. So 1500 was my bottom line. That was the bare minimum that I needed to pay my rent, uh, get groceries. I think that that allowed me to like go out and get a drink with friends, a drink, like maybe once a week. I was like 22, 23. I didn't have kids. I wasn't thinking about all that. But, uh, and so what I did was since I was making $2,500 a month and my bottom line was, um, $1,500, I think that I would save like eight fifty a month. <laughs> like I had very little wiggle room. Yeah. Like I would have months where I'm like, I don't have enough money in my account to put gas in my car. Um, <laughs> which was fine at the time. Like I, yeah. I was saving until it hurt because, and it allowed me a lot of really awesome things. And I also had the privilege of not having student loans and not having yeah. a car payment and not like there were a lot of things I had that also put me ahead that other people are not in that situation, but I would budget those savings mm-hmm. and that guaranteed that I was always putting something away. Yeah. But I've never been a spender. That's true. You're a saver. You just love to save. So, but you are. Yep. And have been. So do you have budgeting tools that you would recommend? No, I was never a good budgeter. I've gotten better at it. I've, I've just learned to spend less. I've learned that things don't, uh, things don't build you up as much as you think they will. So, yeah, I have used an awesome app. Um, you need a budget is an awesome app. If you're looking for a budgeting software or anything like that, um, I've used that one and that one's really good. But so to wrap it up, just uh, try and automate your savings, uh, try and save aggressively and then uh, and find a content creator or educator or professional to teach you about this that does not make you feel bad. Yeah. Like find someone that makes you feel encouraged and inspired when it comes to money it doesn't demonize you. Yeah. Because I, I think something that can be really unhealthy when talking about money is we make people feel bad for them, their circumstances. Or for decisions they've made in the past that like we're not advi- like it, Don't try and take it as a reflection of you as a human being. Right. Like to me, the fact that you're asking that question probably means that you're working on having really healthy financial habits. Mm-hmm. So you're rocking it and keep doing that. Yep. All right. Are we ready to call it? I think we can wrap it up. All right. You can find Matt at... Matt.Overby at inst- on, on Instagram, at Instagram. At Instagram. At Instagram.com. He's 30. I don't know if you guys know, but he's 30. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old, old man. Yeah. I don't really understand how these, these TikTokers do it, but... Uh, and at Mr. Joe Johnson on TikTok. Speaking you can of. find me at Joe Johnson Overby everywhere and leave us a comment, leave us a voicemail and uh, let DM us know... Us? Yeah, what? DM us. Oh, yeah, DM us. And let us know what you want to hear about. I actually was going to say, so many people have been DMing me after they listen. Oh, great. I've been really enjoying that. So if you listened and you had a thought that you want to share, send me a message. Perfect. I love it. All right, talk to you all soon. Later. Bye.